Good morning and welcome to St Ignatius Carried Off along with our friends in St Andrew's Killeney as we meet for worship on this the second Sunday before Lent. It's the 7th of February. You're very welcome. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. We gather in our homes in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. We ask him, O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Sovereign God, creator of all, we offer you our praise today and forever. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Saviour. We bless you, Holy Spirit. One Lord, one God. May the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Our opening hymn is the hymn Before the Throne of God Above, Thanks and Praise, number 11.
as we come to our confession this morning, let's pause to reflect and then confess our sins to God our Father. Those words which we have said over the recent days, which we regret or recognize were untrue or were said in haste. Those thoughts which have stimulated such words and such deeds and the deeds themselves where we have once more fallen short of God's standard shown to us in his perfect son Jesus Christ. O oh God, our, our loving Father, Father in heaven, heaven we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you. you. We have broken your commandments, we have often been selfish, and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to hear God's word, we ask God to help us. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. We thank Joan Nevin and Mary Mack from our parishes for reading our lessons this morning. The reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ our God. Not that we are confident in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our confidence comes from God. He has made us confident as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Mark chapter 2 beginning at verse 13. Jesus calls Levi and eats with sinners. Once again Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. As he walked along he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but those who are ill. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will be pulled away from the old, making the tear worse. 
and no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. Love letters. I wonder, do you ever remember receiving one of those? We are a love letter from Christ. In our third round of spring cleaning during lockdown, and we've all uh, taken a, a fancy to this during the times we're stuck in the house, I came across a pen which was given to me by my daughter. I remember her telling me that she was at Mont Blanc and on a holiday, and I jokingly suggested that she bring me a Mont Blanc pen home as a souvenir. I like fountain pens. For those of you who don't know, Mont Blanc pens are among the best and most expensive fountain pens you can buy. A cheap one is about 500 quid. Imagine my surprise when she came home from the holiday with a gift for me. And it was a Mont Blanc pen. Well, almost. It was not the real thing. It said Mont Blanc on the side of it, a gift from Chamonix. It wasn't quite as expensive, I'm glad to say. It was close, but not the real thing. And I was heartily relieved to see that she hadn't wasted her money. Can I make a confession here? I've hardly ever used that pen, not to write notes or letters or even to scribble. Recently, I received a few letters of thanks from a family and I was struck by two things in those letters. First, the quality of the handwriting and the words chosen to say thanks. But most of all, by the fact that those kind people had taken the trouble to write. So I made the effort to get out one of my fountain pens and write a reply. Not a love letter, but a letter written and received in love. Paul describes the Corinthians in these words. He says, you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. God's people are to be like letters from Christ for everyone to see and read. What sort of a letter are you? If your life is the only image people have of Jesus, what sort of a message do you and I convey? To be honest, that's a question I have to ask myself very often. Are we presenting an unclear message? I fear people, when they look at me and look at you, get a very unclear, smudged message. The penmanship has gone awry. The letters are hard to read. And the reader, the people around us, give up reading before long. And that's a reason for repentance. Have we presented a smudged message? appearance of Christ within. We need to reflect on our approach, for instance, to money. Are we so concerned for a bargain these days that we risk supporting companies which mistreat their workers or even use slave labour? Are we always going for what is cheap rather than what is right or good? We have made an unclear message by how we've lived our lives. Or perhaps our message is downright ugly. Is the problem with the letter people see when they uh, see us that that letter is uninspiring, unpleasant or uncaring? When we paint the Christian life as if it were dull rather than challenging, mundane rather than heavenly, we turn people off. 
For instance, we need to see if our political outlook, which we very often can talk about, is filled with a harshness or even a fury which turns people away from Jesus. And their reaction to our political outlook is, he said that and he's a Christian. She says that and she goes to church. We've presented an ugly message. Or maybe it's a misleading message in this letter from Christ. When the advertising blurb comes across the door, we politely call it junk mail. We often get beautiful printing where marvelous and skilled wordsmiths have att created attractive brochures for us to read. Your skin will be years younger. Your clothes will look better and fit better. Your vehicle will be more secure. Your life will be easier. That's the message they proclaim. It's clear enough. But then we discover the exorbitant cost of the face cream, which our grandmothers with their pure skin and soap and water never needed and couldn't afford. The smart clothes without the fancy labels, which look just as good, and so on. The message which a church proclaims must not be misleading. Whether it's its minister or its people, we can leave people confused. The church presents the message, we are saved by grace, by the blood of Jesus. But we act as if we are saved by going to church. We say we are true disciples if we abide by the teaching of the Bible. But we act as if paying in was the true sign of membership of Christ's body. We can say that Jesus offers forgiveness as we repent in faith, but we act as if we have to hide in the sidelines for 20 years after some failing before we will be considered for service in a church or in a group. The message is misleading and we've lost the gospel. Today, Paul is reminding me and you that we are the key witnesses to Christ that the world can see. Our use of time and money, our principles, our practices, our words and deeds. These are all that the world can see when they're looking to see Jesus. How are we doing? Do you and I need to tidy up our penmanship, the image that our lives present? Do you and I need to smooth out the errors in our writing, the fractured message that our lives represent? And do you and I need to clarify our message so that our children, our parents, our siblings, people whom we long to see one for Jesus, will not see in us judgmentalism and preachiness, but instead see loving compassion and loving support. Let's be love letters from Christ to our families, to our workmates, to our world. The Collect for the Word today picks up this theme. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, you have given your only Son as the sacrifice for sinners. Grant us grace to receive the fruits of his redeeming work with thanksgiving and daily to follow in his way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Michelle and Eric are going to lead us in the hymn 525, Let There Be Love Shared Among Us. Oh,
let us declare our faith in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is, this is our, our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, Father, Father Son, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. We thank Jenny for leading us in prayers today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us safely to this day. May we use today and every day to bring honour and glory to your name so as those around us can see the teachings of Christ reflected in the way we live our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christians, we are taught to love one another even more than we love ourselves. May we always respect and value others regardless of class, creed or colour and accept one another as Christ accepted us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us not only to ask for forgiveness for our own sins, but also to forgive those who sin against us, just as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgives us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. During these difficult times, we pray for the elderly and vulnerable who feel isolated, lonely and anxious. Help us to give generously of our time to support and comfort them in any way we can. We also pray, Lord, for organisations such as the Larder, that they will get sufficient resources to help meet the needs of those who are finding it hard to feed their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christians, help us to remember the importance of prayer. As our lives continue to be disrupted by the effects of COVID-19, we pray for protection and healing for ourselves, our families, our church family and our friends. Let us also give thanks for the selflessness and dedication of doctors and nurses, teachers and their assistants, shop workers and delivery people, bin men and postal workers, as they struggle to keep our society going. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for all those who are lost, hurting, sick and bereaved. Lord, send your comfort, peace and calming presence to all those who are without hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church of Christ, for David our Bishop, for Stephen, Marlene and Keith. Guide them, Lord, in all things, so as they may be an inspiration to us in our Christian lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, open our eyes to your presence, open our minds to your peace, Open our lives to your power. Guide us on our pilgrimage through life that we may walk in the way of peace and find our freedom in your service. Amen. The Collect of the Second Sunday Before Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to pray. Our Amen. Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us give thanks to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For the love of our Father, the maker of all, the giver of all good things, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who lived and worked among us, for his suffering and death on the cross, and his resurrection to new life, for his rule over all things, and his presence in the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who teaches us and guides us, for the grace of the Spirit in the work of the church and the life of the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us say together, as letters of Christ we serve in the world, to, to walk in, in God's light, light to, to rejoice in God's love, and, and to, to reflect God's, God's glory. glory. Following the blessing, we're going to hear the hymn, Ten Thousand Reasons, sung by the Turners from Willowfield Parish. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday at our midweek communion online and each morning at the daily prayers sometime around half eight each day. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us.